Hello, John from Bang & Olsen in Manchester and I've got nothing new to show you yet. I've got some really cool stuff in October time but until then nothing new so I thought I've got some old stuff. Well let's do a retro review. So let me know in the comments if you like this sort of thing because I've got some more retro kit that I can do it on. So today we're going to have a look at the rather beautiful Beolab 11 subwoofer. I hasten to call it a subwoofer for reasons that I will explain, but uh, nevertheless, let's have a look at this old classic and see what's going on. So, Beolab 11. This came after the Beolab 2 subwoofer and sat just below it in the range, so they ran side by side for a while. This was a smaller version, very compact, very cleverly designed little thing. So, there's two two and a half litre sealed enclosures, no base ports. Uh, and in each housing there's a six and a half inch bass driver. Uh, so this was called uh, an acoustic balance principle. So both of the drivers are both opposite facing uh, and, it, and it creates in phase frequencies. So the job of that was to eliminate vibrations from the cabinet. So all those vibrations that would normally affect the sound and the cabinet are almost eliminated, making this a very dead subwoofer. So the upshot of that was it was very easy to place. It was happy on the floor, it was happy on a shelf or a piece of furniture and it could also be mounted on the wall without rattling wall brackets and tables and things like that to pieces. It came in all sorts of colour finishes. It retailed for around £1,600 um, and these shells would come off and could be replaced should they get damaged or you fancied changing colour, these beautifully machined aluminium shells. Now due to its small cabinet and small drivers it needed quite a lot of power to shift any sort of air so this was run by a 200 watt ice power digital amplifier housed inside the unit, a powered subwoofer. Now this was intended to sit below the Beolab 2 subwoofer and I have been doing a little bit of listening with them, reminding myself of what this little thing sounds like. Now it's a very different animal to the Beolab 2 and the current Beolab 19. It's a lot smaller than Beolab 2 and Beolab 19 as you can see. But the idea of having the two six and a half inch drivers in this clever design was that two six and a half inch drivers gives a similar sort of sound to one ten inch driver. So its sound defies its small size. Now after a bit of listening, say it is a very very different animal to the BLAB 2 and BLAB 19. It's small and it makes it very, very musical. For music on a pair of Beolab loudspeakers, this thing is absolutely fantastic because it's so fast and it's very, very tight. It doesn't extend super deep like the Beolab 2 does. They quote 33 hertz uh, as its lowest point, albeit a bit naughtily at minus 10 dB, which is almost insignificant. So it was always recommended to go with the smaller Beolab speakers. I've heard this particularly sound good with Beolab 4, uh, Beolab 4 PC and Beolab 6000 and 4000. Uh, it sounded particularly good with Beolab 6000, it just adds a little bit of grunt at the bottom end of those 6000s and adds an extra dimension to music particularly. Um, Beolab 8000, Beolab 3... Mm, it does make a small difference, but I quite like the sound of Beolab 8000 and Beolab 3 by themselves. I don't think this added a great deal to them. It does take some of the load off the low end for them, so it, it does improve the sound somewhat, but I wouldn't recommend it anything bigger than sort of Beolab 8000s because then you're actually reducing the effective frequency range. So something like Beolab 9, you really don't need this, and they don't recommend it for a Beovision 7 using Beolab 7.1 or 7.2 or 7.6 speaker because that Beolab 7 speaker has a much deeper bass response than the Beolab 11. So, if you're using a Beovision 7 with just this or in a surround sound setup, this really isn't needed. If you want a subwoofer, you're best going up to Beolab 2 or Beolab 19. Now, where this excels over the Beolab 2 was its musical performance. Um, for music, it is outstanding. But if you're using it for movies and you're expecting that slam that you get from the LFE channel on movies, this this isn't the one. She uh, she just doesn't do it. Um, nothing like the Beolab 2. The Beolab 2 is a bit of a weapon. 
uh, and it's got that real deep punch and that hard movie slam that you need from a film soundtrack. Whereas this is not where this one excels. Now the Biolab 19 is sort of a mixture between the two. It hasn't quite got the slam of a Biolab 2 subwoofer. Um, but it does extend extremely deep, much deeper than the Biolab 11. So the Biolab 19 is sort of a nice mixture between Biolab 11 and Biolab 2. It's still got some of that slam, but it extends much deeper than the Biolab 11. So all the connections are underneath the subwoofer. Cables come through this little recess here. So everything's kept nice and tidy and you've got little clips underneath to keep your e-cables nice and safe. Uh, then your input is a power link in, which is here. So that came from a Bang & Olsen audio system, uh, uh, a non-Bang & Olsen AVR or a Bang & Olsen television. And then you've got power link out. So if you're using a TV, it, you would just use the power link in and, that, and let the TV deal with the rest. But if you're connecting it to an audio system, you would have power link from the audio system into power link in and then use the power link out to go to your two BLA speakers and then we select the little dip switches down here to tell the subwoofer what to do so you've got line or power link line was for non bang olsen equipment power link is for a bang and olsen source minus db and zero db generally you would leave it on zero db minus db was mainly for biolab 4 pc or it, it changes the sensitivity of the subwoofer depending on what you're connecting to and then you've got external or internal base management. So the external base management was if you're connecting it to a, a, a Bang & Olsen television or an AVR that does its own base management and roll off, you would set it to external. Um, so this would play the full frequency range and let the other equipment deal with the roll offs. Or you would choose internal if you were connecting this to an audio system and then running Bang & Olsen speakers from the power link out. So this would filter out all of the bass and play the bass and then everything that wasn't bass would get fed out to the main speakers. And then you've got your position switches. So this shows you here the pattern of the switches that you're to use. Position 1 was free space and position 3 was corner with position 2 being wall. So it would set the amount of gain through the subwoofer to tailor it to its position in the room. So there you go, Biolab 11, my first retro review. What do you think? Let me know. Do you want some more retro reviews? Because I've got some more old speakers that I can do. Um, yeah, it's great. I highly recommend picking one of these up second hand if it's using with small speakers, Biolab 4, 4000, 6000 in particular. Um, it's a great companion to Biovision Horizon or the V1 or the Biovision 10 or even the Biovision 11. Uh, it's a fantastic companion for those and it just adds a little bit of low end to the TV speakers and it's such a nice neat looking thing, it's easy to mount somewhere and it looks just like an ornament. It's a really cleverly well designed subwoofer, which you would expect from Bang & Olsen I suppose. So of all the Bang & Olsen active subwoofers, here is my little rundown. Best for movies by far, I would say Biolab 2, um, best for music for small speakers is Biolab 11. The best all-rounder, which is best suited for movies and music and is the best all-rounder, the best overall sound, I would say Biolab 19. So if you are looking around for a subwoofer and looking at second-hand or new options, there's my humble opinion. So there you go, first retro review. I'll do another one soon if you would like me to. Let me know and you'll see me in the next video.